what's up everyone welcome back to another episode of Nemeseek and today we're going to talk about these character things that have been dropping like these spotlights on characters on Instagram um, well, I'm sure they're dropping on social media like uh, Twitter and Facebook as well I just don't have those platforms so I'm not seeing them there but on Instagram uh, you have Johannes Roberts the director of this movie dropping character spotlights I guess they're going to do one every day this week so in this episode we're going to talk about the first two which is the Redfields uh, Chris and Claire my two favorite Resident Evil characters and so in this one, they, they, you know, they showed these images here that you can see where it's uh, kind of funny because I think Kaya, who plays uh, Claire, she even put in her comment like, yeah, this was a little silly. I thought on the day when we were filming this and we had to move in slow motion, I thought it was kind of silly and I didn't like it. But now that I see the final product, she's like, you were right, Sony PR person. This actually did turn out to look kind of cool. So I thought that was just kind of funny to get a peek in behind that. Sometimes actors will do things that they're like, I don't. I don't get this. I don't know why we're doing it. And then the end result is like, okay, that's fine. Like that's, that, it turned out actually cooler than I thought it was. So it's just very human moment. And I, I like that. So, uh, so these little, you know, 3d things that they made where it's just kind of a character spotlight, almost like a choose your character in like a fighting game kind of thing. It kind of reminded me of, but, um, but obviously Resident Evil, they have that when you, you know, on Resident Evil one remake and stuff, when you're like picking your character and you have the ID card and then you switch and then it shows Jill and she's standing there like in an action pose and then it switches back to Chris and he's in an action pose and you can pick the costumes kind of reminded me of something like that. So I was like, oh, that's kind of neat, too. So uh, so this w along with those little images that they released, uh, those little 3D images, they also released these character spotlights, uh, which focus on each Chris and Claire respectively. And the Claire one came out yesterday on Monday. Today we got Chris. And then the Claire one, they talk a little bit about her character. Johannes talks about it, uh, talks about her a little bit. And so does Kaya. And they basically tell you, well, Claire, she is like a runaway. You know, she's someone who grew up in Raccoon City with her brother. They were orphaned and they grew up in the orphanage. And uh, unlike her brother, you know, who stayed behind, she ran away. As soon as she had a chance to get away from that place, she did because I guess she witnessed or um, believed something very horrible happening. And I guess no one else believed her. So she ran away. And, uh, and now this is her coming back to Raccoon City to you know try to get through to her brother she's like you know if i can convince my brother that i actually am telling the truth and show him some evidence of it i believe he'll do the right thing and help me which it, apparently he will and does in the movie um but so she's like yeah that's her mission so even kaya says claire's not coming back here to fire guns and save the day that way um she may be trained and know how to do stuff like that because she's lived on her own and took care of herself but this is not why she came back here. She came back here to educate people to kind of open their mind about what's happening. And I kind of like that because if you look at Claire's progress in the video games, when you get to like Resident Evil, um, you know, the, the CGI movies, like the first one, and then also the Revelations 2, she's working for an organization to try to spread awareness about bioweapons. And she's not really there to be like a, a soldier to fight against zombies and kill zombies. She does because she's forced into that you know position when the zombies you know arrive. But that's not why she's there. She kind of went a more diplomatic route and a more uh, educational route. And I kind of like that. I was like, okay, so she's th that's how they're capturing that version of Claire from later in the games in this movie is that she's coming back to Raccoon City to try to help people with, you know, evidence in her words, I guess. Uh, so hopefully she brought a lot of evidence, but I think she might have arrived just a little too late, much like in the video game when she arrives and the town has already gone to hell. So, um, so yeah, so that they talk a little bit about her character being like that. And so that, again, despite what people say about her looks and all that stuff, like, a, to me, a character is what they do. And yes, the look is part of a character, you know, and I think some of you have kind of illuminated my perception on that a little bit more where i see that to some of you the look is as important to the character as what the character does but to me what the character does is more important than the look that's just my opinion on it i know a lot of people don't agree with that so that's fine if you don't like you, you, you can tell me that down below but uh but I, that doesn't you know my opinion doesn't discredit your opinion and just like your opinion and my opinion doesn't discredit mine so if you think the look is as as important to what the character does that's totally fine. Now, you know, I understand that. I just don't agree with it, but I understand it. Um, and so we move on to Chris now, and we have Chris's video out there uh, where um, Robbie comes out and says, you know, with Johannes Roberts, they talked a little bit about who Chris is. And they say that Chris is a small town hero. So apparently he grew up in the orphanage and then went off and became somebody in the town. I guess maybe he helped someone once or saved somebody and became like a small town hero. You know, maybe he played football, like who knows what he did. Maybe he joined the Air Force like he did in the video games maybe and then went off to war and came back uh, to join the RPD. 
But whatever way, you know, the, the town views him as like a small town hero. But what they say in this is that his journey, though, from that is that he has to go beyond just being a small town hero um, because the, the, the stakes are very high and what they're up against is beyond, you know, something that an average small town hero could probably face and, and survive against. And so he has to become like an action star. He has to become a boulder puncher, I guess. Um, so I thought it was just kind of neat, you know, to hear Robbie and Johannes talk about Chris in this way, because like I said, Chris is my favorite character in the franchise. And even though there are some games that I don't even like Chris in, uh, and I think he's awful in like Resident Evil 6, it's still part of his, you know, that part of him is still part of his lore and his canon and his, and his character. And so hearing them talk about how Chris is someone who really didn't believe his sister, and then she shows up and she's showing him proof or at least evidence through Ben Bertolucci that something might be going on. So he's like, I guess I'll look into it. You know, like I, I don't want to turn my back on my sister, even though she kind of ran away from home or ran away from the situation. Now she's coming back. I guess he's still feels like protecting her, you know, and, and that's very true to the video game character as well, if that's the case. So, um, so I'm, I'm just intrigued. Like just hearing these two spotlights on these characters is great. I can't wait because obviously we're probably going to get, um, you know, we'll get Jill and Leon probably soon too. And I don't know if they'll do a fifth one on Friday, maybe on Wesker. Um, but if they do, I'll do a video with all three of them together and we'll talk about all three of them together. Um, but for this video, I just wanted to focus on Redfields. And like I said, maybe over the weekend, after the other videos drop, I'll make another video talking about those characters uh, over the weekend. So we still got content coming. I'm glad they're doing this. Glad they're doing promotional stuff. They showed off some posters recently. So I'll put those posters up here. I think they were international posters and, you know, uh, domestic posters for the U.S. But they're neat looking too. And, and I just love hearing them talk about how they're trying to really hard to translate this stuff. Like, you know, in the first uh, Paul Anderson stuff, I remember him saying like, oh, I just wanted to, I wanted the characters to look like the characters. So you have a guy that kind of looked like Leon. He had the Leon haircut and the outfit, but he was not a good actor in my opinion. Same with the girl who played Ada and the, you know, and all that. I mean, I think Claire did pretty good. Uh, Ali Larder did good as Claire in those movies. Um, but some of the other characters I, I didn't feel like uh, did a good job. And it's funny, um, people were saying like, oh, the guy playing Leon looks like Carlos, but then the guy who played Carlos in the last movie, Oh Dead Fair, um, didn't look like Carlos at all either. <laughs> so so to me, I don't know, it's, it's about acting like the characters, I feel like, at the end of the day. And so I, I know I always circle back to that, but I feel like that's the biggest point of contention on this uh when I do this show is like that's the biggest thing people challenge me on is is like saying like well I disagree with this but looking back at the Paul Anderson movies my point was that he looked at some superficial things that he thought by getting right made it Resident Evil oh I'm just gonna have a lot of doors open in this movie and I'm gonna you know do this in this movie and and, and some instances he did good like the dogs in the first movie they certainly look better than the dogs in this movie so you know credit there for sure they did they had real actual dogs and in this movie it looks like a cgi dog uh, at least in one of the c shots that we saw um but f overall like i think by them in this one they're like we wanted to make sure the mansion was right we wanted to make sure the characters acted like the characters or at least embodied uh, some of the aspects that we feel the characters have in the games hearing that is something i never heard from paul anderson <laughs> like ever in all six movies he made and he wrote all six movies it was never about capturing the character of anyone other than Alice, who wasn't a character at all. So to me, despite what you feel about this movie, I strongly feel that this is already leagues past the previous movies as far as paying attention to the right things. Um, so, But obviously we won't know how good it is and, and how everything comes together until we see it. Because I'm still a little worried about cramming the stories of Resident Evil 1 and 2 together. Um, but the way they're doing it and the way they're using Claire like this and, and Chris and stuff, I'm intrigued. And now I want to see how they talk about Jill and Leon in the next couple of videos, because obviously that is where some controversy is with those characters. So I want to hear them talk about the characters and see if they actually are focusing on elements of the characters themselves from the video games, um, since the look isn't appeasing to a lot of people out there. But to me, I'm willing to look past the looks of these characters as long as the actors do a good job and they embody what the heart of these characters are. And so I'm looking very much forward to uh, the breakdowns of those two characters from Johannes Roberts and the cast. So we'll cover those as soon as they drop for sure. So thank you so much. Let me know your thoughts of uh, the Redfields down below. 
And again, in the next episode, we'll talk about Jill and Leon and whoever else they released this week uh, for sure. So uh, hopefully they do one for Chad Rook, for Richard Aiken. That would be really great because uh, I'm very excited to see him in this movie too. He's been like a big, awesome like ball of energy when it comes to making these videos because he posted a lot of stuff about making the movie that allowed me to make content for this channel. So I hope they shine a spotlight on Richard Aiken for sure. So let me know again what you think down below. We'll keep talking down there. Thanks so much. See you in Raccoon City. Peace.